Right, so a couple of things have changed since last time and the most obvious one here being the motor and I've decided to place it here on the suspension arm. Now I spent a lot of time kind of wondering how am I going to fit, fit these two large motors on the rear subframe, on the centre plate and I just couldn't figure out a way how I was going to do it and then I realised I don't have to do that at all, right? I can just mount them here on the suspension arms. I'm not 100% sure exactly where I'm going to keep them mounted yet. This is just a test. And I think it all depends how these universal joints behave and how much wiggle there is on the wheel. I'm even considering just placing the motors inside the wheels themselves and coupling it directly that way. That would ultimately be the most efficient way to do it and I'll get onto more of that stuff later in the video. You can also see that I tightened everything up, so I made the suspension arms a bit narrower, we're saving weight. It's all nice and snug, if you remember in the last video, there's a bit of wiggle there, fixed all that. So let's get this 3D printed and we'll test it out. Alright, so at this point I just wanted to test the thing out, so I hooked up the ESC and connected up to the battery. That all seemed good, no immediate issues, so I thought now would be a great time to just throw on the wheel and see what happens. So there were two obvious issues, one being ballooning and the second one being vibration. So after about a half hour of wrestling with the tyre, I finally managed to get it inside out. And from there you can actually use duct tape on the inside and that just prevents that ballooning. I tried to keep it as balanced as possible to eliminate as many vibration issues as I could, but it's really hard to get it perfect. When the tyre is back in its correct orientation, you can see it actually sits in there quite nicely. From there you can just put the foam back in and it's like it was never there. So moment of truth, I bolted the wheel back on and fired it up. seem to fix the ballooning but the problem is that tyre still wants to go somewhere so what it does is it just pulls itself off the rims and I guess the only way to solve this is to actually super glue the tyres to the rims but I don't want to do that just yet because there's no going back. One of the things that I've noticed so far which is not good is the amount of movement here at the axle so if I show you if I just wiggle this around you can see there's a lot of play there now it doesn't look much like this but when you're at a high RPM and you've got the weight of the wheel on the end of this axle, that really translates into some serious vibration. So based on that vibration, I don't think this is going to be the best approach. And I think I've kind of overcomplicated things here a bit, and I think there might be a much better way that I can do this. 
So you can see what I'm currently doing here is coupling a universal joint directly to the shaft of the motor. So if I put this aside for a second and show you one of the motors that has nothing attached to it, you can see what I've been trying to do is add the universal joint here. So I'm trying to couple at this shaft. Now that's fine because you can see as this spins, the shaft also rotates and it's, that's why it's called an outrunner, right? Because the outside rotates with the shaft. But these motors came with a little attachment like this. And what this does is it allows you to couple directly to the motor. So if I spin this around, you can see there's a little attachment on here. And what I can do is I can actually put that straight on there, bolt it on, and that allows you to couple a wheel directly here. And I think this is definitely going to be the best way to go because the whole purpose of doing direct drive is to be as efficient as possible and to eliminate eliminate any losses in between the motor and the axle itself. And if we go back to this, you can just see the amount of movement there. There's going to be so much loss and so much noise and so much vibration that essentially the whole thing is going to dismantle itself within minutes or even seconds. So I think for that reason, the best approach is going to be direct mount to the motors themselves. That will present some challenges. I don't actually think I'm going to have to change this too much really because essentially it's just mounting the motor in reverse but the ends are going to be a bit thicker obviously and I'm going to have to make a couple of changes. The one big challenge really is going to be the steering because obviously this is now going to be mounted, it's going to have a wheel over it here and I need a pivot point for the steering which is going to have to be somewhere out here I think. So there's going to be quite a large pivot and that might not be very good but I'll have to experiment with it and give it a go. And that's what this thing was all about, you know, testing it out. Is this the way to go? I don't think it is. In order to couple the wheel directly to the motor, what I'm gonna have to do is make some changes to the wheel. So you can see here, I've taken the wheel apart. Uh, I've just taken the tire off and you can see the foam in there as well. But now I've just got the original wheel rim. And I'm gonna have to make changes to this, especially this part here, so that I can create the holes necessary the bolt directly into here. You can see there's four holes around the edge and these go directly through this attachment piece into the motor itself so you couple, it'll be, it'll be a great coupling much like a car where you've got the four nuts. So I'm gonna have to modify this to do that. Fortunately for me as well I've already modeled this in CAD so I'm gonna have to make just a few tiny little changes to the wheel hub here and we should be good to go. So the next test you're gonna see from me is all these changes implemented and I should have a direct drive wheel on the end of the suspension arm. As I said, there's probably gonna be a few challenges involved with that, but that's all part of the process and I'm learning a lot and I'm learning fast. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.